Hello, today we're going to talk about international finance. With more and more business going abroad, international investment and finance become a very important topic. For a company considering going investment in a foreign country, a few things to consider. Number one, exchange rate. Number two, political risk. The good news is there are more ways of raising money. So let's first talk about the different ways of raising money in the international finance setting. A lot of uh, foreign companies come to US, sell stock, raise money. The format is called ADR, American Depository Receipt. For investors in the United States, they are able to buy ADRs using US dollar. So these ADRs behave and trade like a regular stock. They pay div dividend and they trade at the regular hours. Here are a list of the 10 ADRs. You may have seen those names before. So if you're considering Investing in foreign companies, ADR is one choice. For foreign investment come to US, ADR is one way of selling stock and raising money. Another way of raising money is sell bond. For international finance, these bonds are called international bonds. There are two types. One is euro bond, the other is foreign bonds. What are the differences? Depends on the type of the currency raised and the number of markets issued. For euro bond, the issuing company is going to sell bond, raise those in issue companies' home currency, and uh, typically in multiple bonds, multiple markets. For example, a US company go to Japanese and the European markets, sell bonds, raise in US dollar. So this is one type of a euro bond because number one, US company selling bonds and raise in US dollar. Number two, there can be uh, multiple issues in multiple markets. Foreign bonds typically is targeted in one market and uh, the currency raised is typically in that market's currency. For example, an Italian company issuing the bonds in the United States. So the bonds are going to raise in US dollar. So this is the one type of foreign bonds. For foreign bonds, uh, you probably heard of uh, Yankee bonds, Samori bonds, Bulldog bonds corresponding to the bonds raised in US dollar, Japanese yen, and uh, British pound. One of the difference between euro bond and foreign bond is restrictions and flexibility. Euro bond is quite flexible and um, um, regulation friendly. The foreign bond is quite restrictive. The issuing company have to meet all the regulation requirement. Euro currency is money deposit in a foreign bank. So the euro does not mean the euro currency or euro zones. For example, US dollar deposit in a European bank or Singapore bank is called euro dollar. A euro, a euro euro could be a euro deposit in uh, another foreign bank. Have you heard about adjustable rate mortgage or other type of floating rate instruments? For adjustable rate mortgage or floating rate instruments, they tend to be linked to one of the interest rate plus adjustment, for example, 50 basis points. So the LIBOR is one of the, the leading international benchmark interest rate. 
widely used in floating rate instruments. LIBOR refers to London Interbank of the rate. So initially, so this is the interest rate charged by bank for each other for covering the capital requirement for overnight use. Now LIBOR can be uh, divided into five currency and seven different maturity overnight, one week, one, two, three, six, and six. 12 months. The most commonly used though at three months US dollar rate, typically referred to as the current library rate. Yields is a UK version of US treasuries issued by British and Irish government issues. Swap is one type of widely used derivatives, typically two parties exchange one floating rate payment for a fixed rate payment could be interest rate or currency as you see if you're considering foreign investment raise money so there are more different ways to raise money such as adrs uh, euro bond and so on now let's talk about exchange rate one thing we have to consider is when you invest in a foreign markets, the currency is different. So let's take a look at exchange rate quotes. As you see, uh, we have these listed exchange currency and exchange rate in two columns. Okay. So last column is each currency quoted in US dollar equivalent. For example, one US dollar equal to 0.8496 euro. One US dollar equal to 110.75 Japanese yen. One US dollar equal to 19.95 Mexico peso. So middle column quote is one of each currency versus how much in US dollar. For example, one euro equal to 1.17 US dollar. One Japanese yen equal 0 0.0090 US dollar. One Mexico peso equal to 0 0.05 US dollar. Exchange rate is uh, widely used. Uh, when we go to travel, we sometimes need to exchange to different currency. For example, if you want to exchange $1,000 into US dollar, Based on this quote, you're going to multiply 1,000 with 108.21. If you're considering purchase a Japanese souvenir, costs 8,888 Japanese yen, you're going to divide this quote to get how much does it cost in US dollar. Sometimes you want to figure out the exchange rate but into currency, they both quote in third currency. For example, typically quote in US dollar. So how much is the cross rate between Euro and the Swiss franc? We simply divide these two exchange codes and got one Swiss franc equal to 0.5 Euro. Let's talk about the exchange rate, the current exchange rate versus the future exchange rate. So if you have a transaction, you want to exchange rate right now. So we will use a spot rate. But a lot of times, we have a transaction takes place in the future, in the forward contract or forward transaction. So we want to specify the exchange rate used in this forward transaction. So that exchange rate is called forward rate. So this is very useful because you can fix the exchange rate today for a future transaction. So this is going to um, serve as a hedging purpose. The difference between forward contract and the future contract is the forward contract is more customized, more flexible, while future contract tend to be standardized. Take a look at the spot rate and the forward rate. So we have two currencies, Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, both quoted 
in U.S. dollar equivalent. So Japanese yen, one U.S. dollar equal to one o five point o five Japanese yen today. Three months later, one U.S. dollar equal to one o seven point seven five Japanese yen. So the value of the U.S. dollar will will appreciate against Japanese yen over the three months period. This implies the value of Japanese yen against the U.S. dollar will go down. Take a look at the Canadian dollar. One U.S. dollar equal to one point two one o two Canadian dollar today. Three months later, one U.S. dollar was one point two one Canadian dollar. So the value of the U.S. dollar goes down against Canadian dollar. This implies the value of Canadian dollar will go up in three months period. An important question regarding currency is purchase power parity. For example, you wonder if the cost is the same if you buy purchase an iPhone in U.S. or in Mexico market. Or for example, you consider how will will it cost the same amount of money? To buy um, Tesla T three in U.S. or European market, the absolutely purchase power parity says the price of same good should be same whether you purchase in one country or another country. But in reality, we know this is very difficult to see that is true. For example, it may cost uh, twice as much. To buy a Tesla in Mexico, consider transaction cost. How much does it cost to import uh, the Tesla model from from U U.S. market to Mexico? In addition, typically government impose the border tax or tariffs for imported goods. One of the purpose is try to protect domestic goods. Sometimes, the product will be customized based on different market, different location. So, for most of the goods, due to transaction or the barrier to trade, uh, absolutely PPP uh, does not hold. Let's take a look at those examples: BMW, iPhone, perfume, gold, fish steak. Which one of the following is less likely to violate absolutely PPP? Means the same goods cost about the same same amount of money. What's your answer? What's your pick? Gold. So typically, the precious gold um, is more likely to hold absolutely PPP. Oftentimes, we accept it costs more money. To buy a Tesla in a foreign markets, but we are interested in find out does it cost more or less in the future. For example, today it costs twice as much to buy a Tesla in Mexico markets. How about one year later? Does it still cost twice as much, or only one and a half, or three times to buy a Tesla? Okay, so what will drive our exchange rate? So what's going to drive the value of the currency? We do know that when there's a high inflation, the value of the currency goes down, the purchasing power parity goes down. So if you compare the exchange rate based on two currency, basic basically what really matters is inflation. So the relative purchase power parity talk about how we're going to predict exchange rate in the future. So it's going to depend on the relative inflation between the two countries. The expected exchange rate in time in the future t equal to spot rate today, and this adjustment term based on inflation in the foreign country and the U.S. market. Suppose Canadian spot exchange rate 
is 1.18 Canadian dollars per US dollar. Now in US, inflation is 3%. In Canada, inflation is 2%. So which country has higher inflation? US or Canada? US has 3, Canada has 2. So US has higher inflation. So we expect the value of US goes down against the Canadian dollar. Let's verify. Exchange rate one year later equal to spot rate 1.18. Inflation in Canada is 2%. In US, 3%. We are considering the exchange rate one year later. So this gives us exchange rate one year later is 1.1682. The value of the US dollar against the Canadian dollar go down from 1.18 to 1.1682. Why? Higher inflation. So here's another practice for you to find out exchange rate in Interest rate parity talk about what driving a forward rate. So typically for forward transaction, a forward rate, the transaction does not take place until sometime in the future. For example, one year later. So during this one year period, you have those money. You can save in US or can save in a foreign, foreign bank. It may give you different rate of investment. So this actually will affect the forward rate. So the forward rate depends on the spot rate and the relative rate of investment between the two countries. For example, we want to find out the forward rate between Euro and the Dollar. The spot rate is 1 US dollar equal to 0.8 euro. But if you put money in the US bank, they give you 4%. If you put money in the Euro bank, you got 2%. So what is implied for the rate one year from today? Spot rate is 0.8. The rate in Eurozone is 2%. In US, 4%. For the rate one year later. So this gives us one year later, one US dollar equal to 0.784 euro. So if in the forward contract, you see this forward rate is different than 0.784, high or lower, then people keep trading, buying low, sell high, make flop profit. In the end, Forward rate has to be same as 0.7. So the interest rate parity defines what that forward rate should be. So with times getting close to the forward contract, then the forward rate has to emerge with the future spot exchange rate. So indeed, the forward rate must equal to the future spot rate. If too high and too low, People will buy low, sell high, make profit, until they are the same. From principal parity, interest parity, and uh, we learned that the left side are all the same. The right side, the relative the inflation difference must be the same as the rate of investment difference. So this gives us one of the important relationship is called international fish effect. Basically, the real rate of investment in US must equal to the real rate investment in a foreign country. So the first one is exactly format, the bottom one is approximate format. So how do we find out if you have an investment proposal? How do I find out the net present value for the foreign investment. So typically, 
We're going to find out how much is the foreign acquired rate of return use the international fish effect. Then use cash flow keys, find out the net present value in the foreign currency. Lastly, convert net present value to dollars using the current spot rate. Let's look at this one example. A new project in Mexico. The project will cost 9 million pesos. The cash flow, 2.25 million pesos per year for five years. The current spot rate is 10.91 pesos per dollar. Risk-free rate in US is 4%. Risk-free rate in Mexico is 8%. The dollar required return is 15%. Should the company make investment or not? So step one, we're going to use the exact format of international fish effect. Find out the required return in Mexico. So we're going to use one plus a foreign currency. In US is 15%. Free inflation in Mexico is 8%. In US is 4%. So then we're going to rewrite We got that acquired rate of return in Mexico is 19.4231. Now let's find out the net present value in Mexico peso. Initial cash flow is 9 million pesos. Cash flow is going to be 2 to 5 million pesos. Repeat for five years. The rate of investment is 19.4231. Then let's compute NPV. The answer is going to be two negative. It's losing money. Seven, eight. So this is in the pesos. Let's convert back to US dollar. So the spot rate is 10.91. We use MPV divided by the spot rate, convert to US dollar. So we actually, this is a um, negative MPV investment. Here is plot show you that how we're going to use approximate format to find out the net present value. The only difference is that we use rough estimate in the required returns. I would ask you to practice one more example. And my suggestion is you're going to keep more decimals, at least six or eight decimals, when we have a um, big number in the cash flow. So this chapter we went over international finance, exchange rate, uh, purchase power parity, interest rate parity, international fresh effects. In the end, we talk about how to find out net present value for um, foreign investment. That's all for today.